Will you support a complete impartial investigation into Trump's Russia game? I'm not even sure how to answer this one. There are, there are a lot of things. Try to be fair to everybody here. There are a lot of issues that you can ask me that obviously we have no direct influence over that does not have anything to do with what I do on a daily basis in the county. However, however, I think you've got both sides now that are giving incomplete information or wrong information. I think there has been or will be or should be an investigation so it can be clarified and cleared up. I don't think there should be a cloud over any of this. But I think what has been coming out and what the previous administration had said as well was there certainly is not a direct link. But the question is, is there a direct link with the president? No evidence has been shown for that yet. If there is, it'll come out. Uh, but it's with the campaign. Next question. Go ahead. Zeppelin Sanchez, please come up. And, uh... Peter Parenti, could you be on deck, please? Peter Parenti? So Peter, why don't you go to that side, and we'll take, uh, is it Zeppelin? Zelton. 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 Hi. Um, Hi. I'm 18 years old, and I'm a resident from Worcester. Thank so, you for being here. Is on immigration. Yes. And are you aware that undocumented immigrants in New York pay more than $1.1 billion in state and local taxes every year? If you don't plan to protect undocumented people from being deported, how do you plan to replace all that money that immigrants contribute to our economy? I have spent a lot of time in areas like Port Chester and Sleepy Hollow and Ossing that have, and Yonkers and other areas that have large immigrant populations. New Rochelle. New Rochelle. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> I was saying before about how diverse our county is. We have 25% of our population is Hispanic, identifies as Hispanic. Y es persiguiendo cada, cada año, is growing every year. And so, if the question is on immigration and immigrants, I think our record speaks for itself. Nobody, nobody should ever feel unwelcome in this county. Number two, number two. Nobody, nobody who walks into a hospital and needs help or is hungry at night should ever be turned away, period, period. Now, what I did last year is in this area, those from Mexico are from the state of Puebla. It's phenomenal that the most, most Mexicans who live in, in our county, Mexican-Americans, or those who are here undocumented, are from Puebla. So, yo fui a Puebla hace un año y firmé. Well, I just want you to understand, we, know you I, well, we have How about people English? who are listening, and I want them to understand as well in both languages. But and answer the question about the budget. That we signed, we signed an agreement last year in Puebla, where I visited. We signed an agreement that would be a bridge between, on the greater scale, Mexico and the United States, but in our world, it would be a bridge between Westchester and Puebla. And we signed an agreement where it starts with eight students from Puebla who came last summer and spent time with us and around that the county and took question. courses at Westchester Community College. Answer the and question! And that is the best way, answer that is the, the best way. Excuse me, answer answering the question, the question please. Answer the question! That is the best way where everybody will see that everybody is a human being that should live with dignity and be treated with respect. And so, we have been and we will continue
continue to be a welcoming community. What's your question? All right, before we get to Peter. Let me say this. We are also, let me also say this though. As welcoming as we are and we should be, we are, we are, and need to be a nation of law. We cannot have a thousand different policies, state by state, village by village, and pick and choose which laws we agree with and will obey and which ones we won't. Now, let me say this about, let me say this about the system. The, the system, the immigration system in our country is broken, okay? Let me finish. The immigration system in our nation is broken. It has been willfully disregarded the problems that exist by both Republicans and Democrats, by those in Congress, and by President Obama and President Bush, and every president before that. And so we are at, we are at the point right now where we have a problem, and we've got to deal with it in a realistic way in this country. Right, hold on. Excuse me. We only have a limited time. We want to get some more questions. Peter, Peter, we're going to go to the next question. People, wait one second. No, Karen, the Dardo refused to come up from White Plains on the question on the environment. Karen, don't come up until he answers her question. Karen, Karen, are you here? All right. Eddie Jones of Mount Vernon? Answer the question. Answer her question. Your question was, what, what was your question? How would we make up the $1.2 billion? So here's the answer. Here is the answer. Oh, finally. We shouldn't have people living in shadows, okay? We should have a system where everybody who participates is on an equal footing. And so if people were to leave, how would we make up that difference? We need to do it the proper way. Everyone who pays taxes should be in the system, and we should not have people afraid, afraid to come out. And I'll, I'll make this plea to everybody. Nobody in this county, nobody in this county should ever, especially if you're not documented, ever not feel like you can't report a crime, that you can't call the police. You should always know that you can do that. You will not be asked for your immigration status because that is not your job. But crimes need to be reported and people need to feel safe. Peter? Question. Peter Perrin. Uh, Peter Perrin, he, uh, almost 50 year resident of Westchester County. Marine Corps veteran for being a Marine Corps. <laughs> On Veterans Day, I'd like to say thank you for your service to all of you in our veterans. This question, you know, you talk a lot. I want to thank you also for all the homeless work that you do for an advocate for the veterans in Westchester County. Our Patriot, uh, yes. I have to talk about your pa Patriot Housing. Patriot Housing Initiative is something we are very, very proud of. We have what's called zero functioning. Um, functionally zero rate, which means that there are no known homeless veterans in Westchester County. That's really important because we made a concerted effort with our Department of Community Mental Health, our Health Department, our Social Services, Veterans Affairs, as well as our police to make sure that we are finding people who need assistance, getting them housing, and in particular with the Patriot Housing, to get uh, landlords to actually give priority to those who serve their country and also get them the services they need to get back on the field. Now your question. Thank you. My question is, I hear you speak a lot about the economy and jobs, creating jobs in Westchester, you've done a great job so far. 
There's a lot of young people coming out of high school that don't move on to college. A lot of college chill kids that can't find uh, work. And uh, a lot of veterans that come home from the military after serving four years and they have no place to go. Police departments aren't hiring, fire departments aren't hiring. Uh, what's your plan to put these young men and women to work? Well, I think actually the Patriot Housing was one of the initiatives because the extension of that is to, there's, I'll put two categories, right? There are people who have served and they need assistance for whatever issues that they're dealing with. And then there are those who specifically need employment when they return from wherever their deployment was. And we have been working with employers around the county to reach out and to set aside jobs and sometimes even training, which we do, for our veterans who are coming back. You know, that, that's not a total pan, you know, panacea to this, but it's helping the economy grow means there's going to be more opportunities for everybody. And so when we look at the Ward 60, for instance, when there'll be 12,000 jobs, several thousand of that is construction work, which will be taking place over the many years that will take before that, that's going to put people skilled and otherwise back to work in long-term employment. That's what we're trying to do. You have to have a growing economy with a welcoming business attitude. Otherwise, we see what happens. You know, businesses and, and capital will go where it's welcome. And you know, the states that have regulations that are overly onerous, that have the highest tax rates, they're not doing well. The states that are more welcoming to business, that are much less taxed, uh, that's where the jobs are going. And so we've got to, no, that's not an opinion, that's a fact. So, okay, who's next? Thank you so much.